So here's an update on the lava cracks. As you can see, the plaster is actually filled all the way to the top. That was not my initial idea. I had an issue earlier in the week whenever I was finishing out this board. I was using, I wasn't using a flexible cup like this. I was using a harder plastic cup and evidently I've used it so much that when I bent it to get a pour, it just completely cracked and plaster went everywhere. Uh, so as I'm sitting there looking at this, I'm like a deer in the headlights or you know, somebody watching a Polly Shore movie, you just kind of stare at it and don't know what to do. I decided, okay, I have two options. I can either completely scrap the piece and build another board. Um, that really was not on my top priorities of things to do. So what I decided to do was go ahead and fill in the cracks here and on the other boards. Instead of doing the airbrushing, what I'm going to do is take a Dremel and I'm going to carve out cracks on uh, the inside of the actual plaster itself. So it'll be kind of a three layer thing. And um, I'll show you that in just a bit, but I wanted to give you an update so you'll know what's going on and we will go from there. Okay, the first step after we have filled the plaster to the top is to texture the top of the plaster. So all I have done is taken an old dish towel that has you know, some kind of raised pattern to it and while the plaster was still wet, all I did was dab it on the top. And that it's probably going to be hard to see on the video but there are little indentions all over the top of the plaster. Um, there is depth to the plaster, a little bit on the top has been taken off. The, uh, the dish towel or rag or whatever you use will pull some of it up and that's good. That gives us that extra added dimension that we're looking for. So now what we need to do is uh, take a marker. You can use a fine tip marker, you can use a uh, expo marker, whatever works for you. <clears throat> and all we're going to do is draw out some lines of where the lava may actually be in the center. There's no specific way to do this. It's just whatever you're comfortable with. As you can see, I really don't have a set pattern as to how I want to do it. This is just the initial lining in. Okay. <clears throat> now that that's done, what we need to do is go into any of the places that have some depth to it already. Like I have an area over here. Um, I have one down here. A little bit in there. This whole area here. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to 
take a marker that has a little bit thicker of an edge and I'm going to fill in some large spots where the lava may actually pool up lines don't have to connect so you see how I have this over here on the side down here all we're doing is making a guideline for what we're going to drill out and you can make some areas by themselves this marker really sucks man it's doing better with a small one <clears throat> Okay, I think that may get us for now as I, you know, keep drawing. Okay, so as I said, this is just a guideline. Now, what we're going to have to do is take the Dremel or any rotary tool that you have. Mine is a Black & Decker RTX, it's a three speed rotary tool, not the brand name Dremel but it works for me and I'm not sure if I can get that on camera or not but I have a very small diamond blade on the end and all I'm going to do now is route out these lines. I'll follow this as a guideline, I probably won't stick to it completely. You know, there'll be some edging over here that I'll want to do, and I'll make some a little deeper than others. Uh, but that is it. So here we go. So you can see it looks like little ant tracks, <clears throat> not anthrax, ant tracks. Um, so that's, that's basically what we're looking for and what we'll do is go in and widen these out. Like I said, this was just a guide. So what I'm going to do is go back and widen these out and I'll give you uh, maybe a still pick or come back once it's done and show you what it looks like. You can see that I finished carving out the plaster. Uh, some of the lines are actually very thin. Some are very deep. Uh, I widened out most of them as compared to our initial drawing on the plaster with the marker. I uh, just felt that um, the lines were a little too thin. So I went back in and 
I've made those a little larger. Some of them are still small, uh, but I think giving it uh, some variation will make it look better in the end. So that's all that, we're, that we need to do for this. Uh, next will be the painting. So what we'll do for that is color the entire piece in yellow, dry brush with orange, dry brush with red, dry brush with red and black mix, and then the final highlight will be solid black.